Friday morning painting workshop with Smudge. Thank you so much for joining me. It is a very small group today. We have Taya and Carrie and myself, and then Raven is supposed to join us, however. Uh, she may have gotten tied up or just decided that she wanted to enjoy the lovely weather while she could. So today we are going to create our Bedazzled to Be Sweet masterpiece. It's really just a pineapple. Um, so Taya, you have your own canvas, and I'm sure you can imagine that the outline is, is pretty simple, but when you do your pineapple, um, make it fill at least half of your canvas. So the top of my pineapple is just over half, and then it actually goes almost all the way to the bottom. So there is a large oval for my pineapple, and then I just have some guiding lines up here for my leaves. That's it, that's quite simple for the outline. So if you want to outline, you can do that. Um, the other thing that you should have are your brushes. So I'm going to do small, medium, large again. Um, mostly we'll be working with the small and the meat, or the medium and the large. And of course you want your acrylic paints. So today I'm going to do my background pink, but of course you can do your background any color you want to. You always want to have white, and as long as you have your primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, you can, you're good to go. However, the pineapple part itself is going to be a sienna. Um, that's just the base coat, and then we're going to add layers on top of it. And then the leaves, we're going to do various shades of green, and then hopefully by that time, our pineapple is a little bit dry, and we can start adding just a couple jewels to it to just make it sparkle. The other thing, of course, that you will want to have is a paper towel. You will also need a, um, your jar of water so that you can rinse your brushes. So just a reminder, because you are using acrylic paint, you never want this paint to go down the drain, even if it's the leftover stuff in your water jar. I, I mean, it does happen, but it can pile up, right? So always make sure that you're wiping your brush before and after you rinse so that you can get as much of that paint off as possible before you do stick your brush in the jar. Basically, we don't want to have painty water and we don't want to have watery paint. So, if you are ready, we are actually going to do just a really thin base coat on our pineapple first. I know that might totally blow your mind because it goes against almost everything that we've done before, uh, but we are going to start with the pineapple and then we're going to move to the background. I know, really rude. So, um, this is my sienna. It is just a, a reddish brown, a, a lighter brown color. And I know it doesn't really look like it should be pineapple. We always associate yellow with pineapples, but that's not the case. We're doing the outside of the pineapple and it's various colors of uh, browns and golds and things like that. So, um, with your large brush, um, and I've got quite a good amount of sienna on my brush, we are going to outline first, and you can outline with the brush on its side to get a thin line, or you can outline on its face to get a thick line. Anyway, we're just going to outline first. Do spread out that paint so that it dries. This is just our base coat artist, so this doesn't really have a lot to do with uh, how the end product will look. I just want to give some time for this pineapple to dry before we go on to the next steps. So the base coat, and I have some gloops and globs there, so do spread those out. Um, the base coat just gives us a base color. It's not going to look pretty. and it's just going to be thin, so do spread it out. So outline first and then fill in. So I just fill in with my face and I tend to follow my contour lines, which are the edges of my pineapple. And like I said, do spread out any gloops and globs so that it does dry and just, just fill it in. It looks like my iPad has decided, sorry, artists, I'm just going to not do that. Maybe do that. There we go. <laughs> All right, once you're done filling in your pineapple, and again, do try and spread out. Yes, I know my pineapple is perfect here. I'm just 
spread that out, make it a little bit bigger. And uh, white prints and wipe your brush out because now we're going to go on to the background. I know, how confusing. I'm sure I totally threw you guys off with doing the pineapple first. That never happens, right? So wipe off your brush first and then stick your brush in the jar. Wrap those bristles along the bottom so that they get some movement in there. Don't smush your brush down. When you do that, you really do hurt your bristles. Just gently give it a swoosh along the bottom so that your bristles get some movement. Shake it out when you're done or tap it out. And then wipe it again or squeeze it with some new paper towel or a clean part of your paper towel, whatever you like. So I know that for my background, I'm going to do a light pink. So I do need some white. So I just scooped some out of my little uh, tub here, put it on the side of my plate, and I am going to double dip. So um, both of you have painted with me before. You know that I like to do messy backgrounds. However, I usually start around my object first, but because I just painted my pineapple in, I don't want to start there. I actually want to start furthest away from it. So um, when you do your background, think of how you want the streaks in your background to look. And your background can be any color you want it to be. I've done orange, I've, we've done turquoise, um, a soft yellow might be really nice too. I'm going to do um, a lighter pink. So there's different strokes that you can do when it comes to doing your background. You could do vertically and just, you know, fill it in that way. You could do kind of a crisscross, which I'm going to do. I like the crisscross look. You could do horizontally if you wanted to, or you could, um, you know, totally go out and um, create an entire background. Maybe your pineapple sitting on a beach. That's entirely up to you. Hi. However, um, we are going to move on to our background. So my background, like I said, I'm just going to do a whole bunch of messy X's because that's what I like to do. I find that it just gives my background texture, but it's entirely up to you artists how you want your background to be. If you want your background to have longer streaks, um, you can do that. You can do vertical or horizontal strokes, pardon me. Really, if this is your masterpiece, you decide. We're going to stay away from that pineapple just for now. So just get as close as you can without actually touching the pineapple. We'll get there. I just want to give some time for that pineapple to dry. Now the other thing that you can do while you're doing your background is you can always paint the sides of your canvas. If you are going to be hanging this up or giving this to someone, it's nice to have your sides painted. It just looks a little bit more finished. The nice thing about doing it now too is you can kind of blend in your colors a little bit. Um, if you go in afterwards, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. So again, with my background, I'm just taking my large brush and double dipping. So I've got some pink and some white on my brush. And I'm just doing my X's and spreading out my paint because that is how I like my background to be. Again, artists, this is your masterpiece. I want you to decide how you want your background to be. I just did extra streaks like that because I had a lot of paint on my brush. So I just wanted to spread it out a little bit. And if you're wondering why I stayed away from my pineapple for right now, it is because I just want to make sure that my sides are dry. Oh, they are. Oh, good. Before I go on to add more paint. Actually. So when I spread out my paint like this, it's really just because I have a lot of paint on my brush. Now when we're doing this artist, you may want to 
outline if you want to, and then go back and add some texture. That's entirely up to you. But that's what I'm doing. So I'm just going to outline first. Again, let the brush do the work for you. You don't want to do this if your pineapple is still wet. If it is still wet, you will drag that sienna up like that <laughs> around your pineapple. It's funny how you say things and they just tend to happen, right? There. I like my background. I am happy with that. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to work on your background. And then we're actually going to move on to um, we're going to do a quick second coat on the pineapple, and again, second coat, like really artists, I just want thin. We're not going to do thick because we're going to add more layers, and then we're going to go on and start adding some leaves. When you're doing your background, be sure that you're spreading out your paint because we need this part to dry before we can start adding green leaves on top of it. So now that I've done my background, I am going to wipe, rinse, and wipe my brush out. So again, I just, we've only done two steps. We've just um, we've done a quick sienna coat on our pineapple. And then we've just filled in our background. That's it. All right, artists, right, if you're ready to rock on, we're literally just going to do a quick second coat on our pineapple. Don't make this too thick, but the second coat should just clean it up a little bit. We are going to add more layers to our pineapple. In fact, the next steps require us to do crisscrosses, and then within those crisscrosses, we're gonna do a little bit of tashing in each. So tashing is when you take, we're gonna take a smaller brush, of course, because those crisscrosses will be small, and we're just going to kind of tap in some different colors in there to give our pineapple some texture. However, when you're ready, we're just going to grab our big brush, our sienna again, and again, this will just kind of clean up your edges a little bit if you want to. I tend to hold my breath when I'm outlining. Because <laughs> you know if you breathe, you're just going to happen to make a mistake. Alright, artists, don't worry about the second coat being perfect. You know, you can see my streaks and that. We're just going to add it to clean up our pineapple a little bit. And then we're going to wipe rinse and wipe our brush. Our next step is going to be to add some leaves to our pineapple. Um, and we may even do this in a couple of different stages. But for the pineapple, you, you may want different types of greens. So to make green, you just need blue and yellow. If you want your green to be more vibrant, you're going to add some yellow to it. If you want it to be more soft, more like a pale, you're going to add white to it. Carrie, when I did your paints, you have a dark green in there. You are going to want to add um, yellow to it for sure. But of course, just a little bit of yellow and then to make it brighter, more yellow, and to make it even brighter, pardon me, more yellow. So, um, while we're finishing up our second coat in our pineapple, I'm just going to wipe, rinse, and wipe my brush, and then we're going to move on to the green leaves. All right, I'm just gonna make a couple of different greens here. So I do have my dark green in my little tub. This is actually phthalo green, and I do have some yellow. So I'm gonna start with a couple of piles. Um, one is going to have quite a bit of green, and then the other is going to have a little bit less green. Again, those are very specific measurements. Not really. And then I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow in there. If you want to clean your brush off first before you dip into your yellow pot, uh, you may want to do that. We are going to add some yellow to our pineapple. So you may not want to have green in there. All right, so as I'm mixing this up, me, I don't want to tip too far. Maybe I'll just turn it this way. Um, you can see that one of my piles, and when I mix, I tend to dab. The other thing you can do is if you have palette knives, those are really nice to mix with, or even um, just plastic spoons are nice to mix with as well.
All right, artists, so I've got two different types of greens going on here. I have a dark green and a light green. Um, if you want to wipe out your brush first before we do this, you can. However, I'm just going to use my big brush. So you don't have to do this right now, but if you just want to, you know, take a look and watch. So I'm going to get, you know, a good amount of green. And I'm, I'm going to start with the dark green. It really doesn't matter which green you start with. I'm going to start with the dark green. I've got quite a bit of green on my brush and I'm actually going to hold my brush like this and go from the pineapple up to get my leaves. The other thing you can do is if you take your brush and you press a little bit harder and then lighten it, you're actually going to get um, kind of a wide and then a thin, so it'll look kind of like a leaf. Don't worry about being so technical with this. We're just getting some color in here. Oh, that's too short. We want to make this long. We want to give our pineapple. Okay, I want to give my pineapple a nice big crown. I'm going to start with the two guiding lines that I gave myself. Now we are going to add more green to this and you can make your pineapple crown as big or as little as you want it to be. And we are going to add more green after this. So I'm actually gonna let those ones dry before I add my lighter yellow in. Don't worry, it should hang out for a little bit. It should be fine. It's getting bigger. Horses. All right. So I have got some pineapple into the, or some green into the top of my pineapple. That's totally fine. Our next step is going to be to start to kind of divide up our pineapple a little bit. So I'm not too worried about this. We always paint in a manner that we can add more paint and cover up what we've already done. So when you're ready, you're going to take your big brush, you're going to load it with whatever color green you want. Sorry, just looking at my pineapple in the, in the screen. Yeah, I want it a little bit bigger. <laughs> so again, artists, this is your pineapple. You decide how big you want this to be. All right, um, and then I just turn my brush on its side so that I can get some, you know, nice leafy strokes here. And again, you can keep adding. The tough thing to do though is to take away. So if you ever feel like it's too much or it's getting to be enough, just stop. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe, rinse and wipe my brush. I'm going to add my lighter green in a little bit. But our next thing is going to be to start to divide the pineapple up into kind of diagonal diamonds. Um, what I do want you to consider is that we don't, honestly, artists, you don't want these to be really small because you'll be tashing for eons. So um, we're just going to do diagonal lines to make diamonds across our pineapple. But what that's going to require is a dark brown. So Carrie, you got your paint from Smudge. You have the Sienna and black. You're going to take that Sienna and mix it with just the tiniest amount of black until you get a darker brown. It's whatever color of dark brown you want it to be. So if you want to add more black, go for it. It's just that black is really tough to take away. You are also going to want to put it into a different pile. So don't mix this dark brown in that pot. So again, you're going to take your Sienna and just add a little bit of black to it. Raven and Taya, if you have your a dark brown, great. If you have a lighter brown, you're just going to mix it with um, a tiny bit of black. So yeah, we're gonna do this a dark brown. So right, the instructions say to go lighter. Uh, we're gonna go a little bit darker. You can go lighter too. You just want it to be a little bit different. Um, and I'm going to use a smaller brush. So I, yeah, I'll show you the brush I'm going to use. You can use a square head brush too. That actually might work a little bit more nicely than this one will. We just want these lines to be kind of guiding lines almost. 
So I'm just going to take my sienna, dump a little bit here. We don't need a lot of paint. It's not like we're painting a large surface with this. and take the tiniest amount of black, and I'm just going to make a darker brown. Again, you don't have to make a darker brown. You can go lighter if you want to. All right, when you are ready, I'm gonna actually get you to kind of do one line across the middle first. So not across the middle, we're gonna diagonal it <laughs> in the middle. So um, I've got my round brush. It's a tiny little brush. You can use a flathead brush, a square brush, whatever you want, just to get a smaller line. And I've got a darker brown on here now. I'm actually going to take my line from this right corner down to this bottom. It doesn't really matter, but we just kind of want it to cross kind of in the middle here. The reason for that is it will give you kind of a nicer guiding line, sorry. You kind of need to do these lines from facing the front, not on the side. So I'm going to take a breath. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put a line down here to where I want it to go. Wow. So I don't know about you, but it seems that when I need to do a straightish line, I start to shake a little bit. Okay, that's straight-ish. So I think technically when you look at a pineapple, I think technically it's lines go smaller up at the top and then bigger towards the bottom. I am not going to be that technical, but if you want to, what you're going to do is you're just going to do this smaller up here. So um, yeah, so basically this is going to be closer and you're going to spread it out a little bit more. Does that make sense? So if you want to be technical, this distance here is about three quarters of an inch. This distance down here is going to be about an inch, okay, ish. So all right, so I'm just using my smaller brush with the dark brown and I am making my squares wider kind of on the bottom or my lines, I should say. I don't know if you can tell. I'm trying anyway. <laughs> the other thing you could do is you could also curve your lines if you wanted to get that technical, to get that shape in. We're just having fun today. So don't think about this too much. Once you've done one side, you're really, or done one direction, you're really just going to do the other direction. So take from probably this side and go across. And these should be diamond shaped. Ish. My diamond shapes are getting a little funky. That's okay. Totally doesn't matter if they're straight artists, they can be round. You can follow the contour of your pineapple if you want to, if you want this to look a little bit more realistic. You're not even hardly going to notice these lines by the time it's done. What it is going to do, however, is it's going to give your pineapple, oh man, now that I'm looking at it, you know how I said before, don't do a lot because uh, you have to tash them all in? Yeah. All right, so you don't have to do this next step. I'm actually just going to outline a little bit because I've got over top. And I just want to clean up my lines a little bit. So artists, actually, you are the first to know that depending on where light takes us, and what happens, Smudge may be looking for another assistant here whenever we get back to doing paint and sip. CJ has decided to move on, um, which we wish her all the best, and she's very talented, so I'm sure she'll do amazing. But we will probably need a studio assistant. Well, <laughs> okay, an art assistant. I guess we don't really have a studio anymore. Um, 
So if you know of anyone, or if you want to relay the message, we do require that they be at least 18 years old, as we do have to paint in the casino. Um, of course, have access to transportation, um, be artistic, and have a, I guess, a goal to kind of move into it. Taylor is an instructor, and she has her BFA. So uh, to instruct, we do require a little bit higher education, but um, by no means is Smudge uh, a full-time job. It's really quite part-time. It would be for more for someone to um, who, who likes doing this stuff and being around people and doing this stuff. So, um, okay, I think I'm done with my squares. <laughs> I think I went a little overboard with all my little ones that I get to tash in. Um, yeah, you could have made this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to wipe rinse and wipe my brush. I'm going to then add my second layer or my lighter layer of leaves and then we're going to start tashing in our colors into each of our diamonds. Alright, so my diamonds are pretty tiny up here, they're definitely not straight. Whatever, it is a tropical pineapple and I am going to love it. So um, I'm going to take my big brush now and using the lighter green, I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. Don't have to go that high. These are more of our background leaves. Oop. When you're ready though, you can take your big brush and then just start adding a lighter green of leaves in here. And artists, you don't have to follow your other leaves. You can go bigger, you can go smaller whatever you want to do. And even if you want to, you could come back and add more of the dark to create more depth. It really, I mean, this is all just about layering, right? And creating those different tones in there. Okay, so artists, you are adding diamonds to your pineapple. When you're done that, you're going to take your big brush and move back to your lighter green and add more leaves. I think I am going to come back and add some darker, smaller ones later. However, so we've got our diamonds, we're working on our leaves. Now we're going after that, we're going to go into Tashi. All right. So artists, just so you know, our next step, we are going to use our medium brush and we're going to need two different shades of a yellow brown. So basically you're going to take your sienna or whatever brown you have and you're going to add um, yellow to it. So one's going to have more yellow than the other, just like the leaves, right? One's going to have more yellow than the other. All right, so when you're ready, so once you've added your, your second um, green onto your leaves, you're going to make two different types of a yellow brown. So I'm going to take my sienna and make two different piles. And then to those piles, I'm going to add a bit of yellow. One's going to have a little bit more than the other. If you don't have brown, you can do this with um, orange. If you want to make brown, you can actually add a little bit um, of purple to it, with the orange, I should say. So I may, I actually don't need any more sienna after this, so I'm creating two pretty large piles here. So. You know two pretty big piles right there and I'm going to just put a little bit of yellow on top or beside and one is going to have more yellow than the other doesn't really matter which one and then we're going to just kind of mix these in a little bit So artists, the first thing that I'm going to do um, with my medium brush is I'm going to get a pretty good portion on here. You know what? I'm changing my mind. I'm going to get another pile of just yellow here as well, just because I want to. So I'm going to start with my dark brown, and inside each of these, so tashing is where you take your brush and you just tap. So we're just going to take this color and we're just going to tap it in. The reason we do that is because we want that texture to show up. 
Don't worry if you go outside your squares. And we're going to do this inside each of your diamonds. Doesn't have to be perfect. And we're going to add the brighter yellow on top. Or sorry, I guess the brighter brown. And then we're going to add just a little bit of the yellow on top. Okay, so don't worry about this being perfect. We just want to create some texture inside of our diamonds. I kind of want to bring this a little bit closer to show you guys how unperfect you can actually be. Unperfect, imperfect, whatever. Same pile. And you can go over top of those diamond squares, if you, those lines that we did if you want to. Actually, I think I'm going to. I'm not going to try and be totally fit inside. I'm going to go over top a little bit. Yeah. Becomes almost too perfect, right? We don't want perfect. Mother Nature is not perfect. She is beautiful, but she is not perfect. I think we ourselves, we put a lot of stress on ourselves to be perfect that our lines need to be perfect and our paint needs to be perfect. And you know what? The best way to create art is to just not care, really. <laughs> just make a mess and the most beautiful things happen. Actually, I was talking to my sister about that because she's like, well, how did you get to be so creative? And me, I don't have a creative bone in my body. I'm like, okay, well, you do. But um, I said it's because you care too much. Like, you care if your lines are straight. And... and um, I don't know, when it comes to art, you need to just let go. The art's gonna turn out how it's gonna turn out anyway. You know, and the other thing too is a lot of people think that art should just be natural. And while I do believe that we're all naturally creative beings, I don't believe that certain mediums are natural, right? So we can all create, like Carrie was telling you that she bakes, and I bet you never thought that was creative, Carrie, but it sure is. Um, or things like painting, right? Um, painting doesn't come naturally. So the medium itself, you know, being musical, I'm not musical. I can't carry a musical note at all, but that doesn't mean I'm not creative, right? Getting a little philosophical there, right? Sorry. Okay. I'm being a little perfect here, artist. <laughs> We're just going to fill in. And I don't know if you can notice how much out of the lines I'm going, but I am. So those lines are actually going to become a little bit more of our background than anything. And I'm just tashing. So tashing is where you tap in your squares and it's really just done to create a little bit of texture. Filling in the whole thing, going over top just a little bit of our diagonal lines. So artists, see how messy this is? Oh, I don't know if you can see way down here. Okay, not pretty, outside the lines. So we're gonna do this exact same process, except with the lighter, and then I'm actually gonna do a little bit of yellow right on top. Um, now artists, when we do the second and third coats of these, our area space should get a little bit smaller. So we shouldn't be filling in the whole thing, we should only be filling in part of it. And if you wanna get like really, really technical, you could just do it on say one half of your diamond-ish. You know, you maybe all of your lighter um, brown is just in the top corner, right? You could do it like that if you want to. So artists, this is nothing that you should be, you know, thinking a lot about. It's really just taking that tashing motion, that tap, 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 and creating a little bit of texture. When you're ready, you can wipe your brush out. You don't actually have to rinse it if you don't want to because we're using the same color family. If you want to, you can rinse it. I mean, if it's getting kind of fat and annoying or the paint's starting to dry in it, then by all means, rinse it out. So again, our next step, really easy. We're gonna take our lighter one and we're going to tash in um, no, I'm just going to do a smaller portion, kind of in the middle. 
I'm not. And yes, you can do this over top of wet, okay? We kind of, we're okay if they get in, into each other. Whenever you paint over top of wet paint, you just wanna make sure that you have more wet paint on your bristles than there is on your canvas. So you might just have to dip a little bit more. Here, maybe I'll go to a bigger one and show you. So I'm not gonna fill it in as much as I did before. I am gonna do the whole diamond. You don't have to, like I said, if you wanna do just, you know, one corner or one half, you can do that. But we're really just tap, 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 tap. Don't even, I don't even want you to think, okay? That's the lovely part part about art. Stop thinking. Actually, that's the nice thing about honestly doing it with me because you just follow along. I don't want you to think about how it looks or what your next step is because I am telling you. So don't fill in the whole thing with this next one. The other thing you could do with this painting, I'm not going to do it, but what you could do is if you have stencils or if you if you have nice writing yourself, um, you could write a little message. You could, could even write be sweet on the painting. Um, you know, there's all those other beautiful pineapple messages out there. I love our pineapple. She just makes me happy. So artists, what do you think of this texturing? Like it's just kind of nice to make it messy, right? And it just adds a little bit of, a little bit of something to our pineapple. And those lines before that really bugged me that they weren't straight, don't bug me anymore. And it's okay if some are different, are lighter than the other. It doesn't really matter, artists. We're just, it's just painting. And so if you did want to give your pineapple, you know, a little bit more dimension, I'm just adding this brighter yellow to a, a corner of each diamond. Again, you don't have to do this. You know what, artists, I have to admit, I don't know if our pineapples are going to be dry enough even today to bedazzle, but I am going to show you how to, you know, add your sparkle. And then maybe you could do that tomorrow instead of today. I don't think, I've got a lot of paint on here. I don't know about you, but it's starting to pile up. Cause you know, it actually takes about 24 hours for acrylic paint to dry properly. Um, so we don't want to be adding things that we want to stick on here or even writing things. So if you are going to use, you know, a Sharpie or anything like that to write a message, wait until tomorrow before you do that. Because right now is the time where your pineapples are really coming to life, right? And they're really starting to take on their own dimension and their own personality. I've said this before, you can never do the same painting twice. It will never ever happen. That's called a photograph or a print. So I'm just taking my plain yellow and just blending in a little bit here in the corners of whatever it doesn't even have to be in all of them, artists, okay? So just enjoy the process of blending in your paint, getting messy. Do go over top of your lines because you don't want those, you don't want them to, to show really. Like, sorry, you do want them to show. You don't want them to um, take over your masterpiece. And so remember before when I said, yeah, I'm messy? Yeah, apparently I got some brown here and some yellow here. So I'm just going to fix that up while you guys are uh, working on your pineapple. After this, we're going to go on to, I'm going to add just another set of a lighter green. I'm finding my greens are blending too much in together. So I might even need, need more yellow or more white. Um, and then that's actually an artist, but I do want to add a little bit more greenery up here. So I'm going to fix this up. You guys finish this off. Then we'll go on to add a little bit more green in here. I'm gonna go lighter. Um, and then I'll show you a little bit about the bedazzling, but I've got, I've sure got a lot of paint on here. So um, we're not actually probably going to bedazzle today, but tomorrow you'll be totally fine too. 
All I did for the sparkles was I, um, you know, found those craft stick on sparkles, and I'm only going to put about 10 on, 10 ish, because that's what I like. Um, I find if you, you know, there gets to be a point where you can do too much, right? So I have just made a lighter green. I've added some white to that lime green that I had going on before, and I am going to use that in here. I'm also going to use my medium brush to see if I like that. So let's just see here. Oh, I do like that. Oh, I do like this lighter green. Okay, Paige, don't go too much. You know what else I'm going to do with this lighter green artist is I'm actually going to, you know how I said I was going to clean up the bottom here? I'm actually going to do it with this lighter green. So I'm actually just going to take mini strokes up here, almost like I'm... All right, artist, so when you're done tashing in your diamonds, uh, if you want to add another layer <laughs> of green to your pineapple, Oh, I'm going all crazy now, right? You can do that. I'm actually using my smaller brush, and I like the way that this light green shows up. So I'm actually using it to do some cleanup up here. So I'm just going to kind of tighten up my crown a little bit and add in some highlights to my crown, too. It's one of those, like, am I going to like it? So I've just taken it and kind of followed my other leaves a little bit and then kind of gently pulled up from my pineapple upwards because that's how leaves grow from the pineapple right yes okay and then um just kind of cleaned up and i am happy with my pineapple i think that's all i'm gonna do all right you know there gets to be a moment where you're like okay i could just keep going and going and going but at some point in time you need to be happy with it so I'm happy with my pineapple the way it is. Um, I do need to paint the bottom still and I do need to clean up this side, but I can do that later. Our very last step to this masterpiece is to bedazzle our um, pineapple. I have a feeling that Raven and Taya are too young to remember bedazzle. So in the 80s, there was a, um, it was a bedazzler kit, I guess, is what you bought at the Dazzler Tool. Maybe they still have them. Actually, a really good show to watch for that is um, Goldberg. Thank you. That's it. Because Mama, she sure bedazzles. Thank you. So it was a little tool that um, you just add gems on to all of your clothes, everything. Uh, anyway, we're not going to use a little tool. We're just going to use sticky gems. All right. So artists, um, some things you can do when you do decide that you want to add gems is the gems do come with stickies on them. However, if you don't want to use the stickies, you can also use glue. Uh, white glue is fine. Lay it down flat and use tweezers to put your stickies on. The other thing you can do is use two-sided craft tape and gently roll in a little stick. Um, so... We're not going to bedazzle, okay, I'm not going to bedazzle my whole pineapple, but I am going to put a little gem here. And I want to do it at my cross parts, and I am going to sparkle my pineapple up. But because I have too much paint right now, I'm actually going to wait for it to dry until tomorrow. The other thing I could do is I could write a message, you know, even if you wanted to use um, a Sharpie, you can do that. But again, just wait until tomorrow for it to dry. So you can see that little gem right there. I'm not going to do it in all of my X's because that would just be whoo, really kind of crazy. But you know, you might want to add it randomly throughout or maybe you just want to add it all in one kind of corner to make just that corner of your pineapple sparkle. That being said, artist, that's your very last step for your bedazzled, the sweet pineapple. Um, so I am going to give just kind of closing remarks, and then I'll stay on for however long you need me to stay on for. 
So uh, first, I just want to thank you so much for joining me on your Saturday to paint our um, bee suite. So the bedazzle part is just for us. We didn't bedazzle it before. So the gems you'll just add on later. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, for your paint, if you have any paint that you can put back or put a lid on, that's fine. But any other paint, just throw it out. It's going to dry up and you're not really going to be able to use it anyway. Um, your brushes, you're going to gently wash them in warm soapy water. Lay them flat to dry. Make sure those bristles are reshaped. And of course your paper towel is going to go in the garbage as well. Do please send me a picture or uh, maybe what we'll do too is uh, just show uh, each other our masterpieces. I, would, I really miss seeing you guys. And I would love to see your masterpieces. Um, so turn on your camera whenever you're ready and I would love to see them. But again, thank you so much for joining me.